Every day, you and I get bombarded with negative news. And just like our bodies becomes what we eat, our minds become the information that we consume. If you want to stay positive, it's so important that you also listen to stories that inspires you and uplifts you. In this podcast, we interview world-leading experts dedicated to solving the world's most pressing problems. And if you stick around, I promise you will not only be as informed as if you watch the news, you will feel uplifted, inspired, and have more positive energy in your life. Welcome to Great.com Talks with... Hi and welcome. Today, Great.com talks with Marcus Westberg, who is a photojournalist from deforestationsweden.org. And if you haven't heard of them before, they are a private initiative that is here to bring awareness to what is happening to Sweden's old growth forest. And if you're new here into this podcast, you definitely want to press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because today we're going to bring awareness of something that is happening in Sweden, my country, that I was totally unaware of. So, Marcus, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Thank you for having me here. So, tell a bit about uh, your organization and why you exist. Um, yeah, well, as I, um, I've mentioned to you before, but, but obviously not your listeners, uh, we're not actually an organization. Um, so I, I'm a, a photojournalist. I, I focus mostly on conservation questions um, in Africa, although during the pandemic, I've been staying in Sweden most of the time. And my colleague in this initiative, uh, Stefan Wiedstrand, is a very well-known nature photographer, also from Sweden. And he's been involved with these questions for longer than I have. But what basically happened was that we were both so fed up with not only with the the deforestation and the destruction of Sweden's natural heritage, but also the hypocrisy around it. We're so quick to judge, you know, what's happening in the Amazon or in Borneo or in Central Africa. And yes, we should. It is important to, to reduce or put an end to deforestation there as well. But the hypocrisy is around the fact that Sweden boasts of being so sustainable and the so-called Swedish model of forestry has been exported as a climate friendly way of managing the forest. But in reality, what we do is we clear cut the forest and then we create monoculture plantations. So we plant one species of tree. Uh, We don't plant oil palms, we plant spruce or pine, but essentially for, for the ecosystem, it does the same thing, it destroys them. Hmm. Yeah, that's, that's really interesting, that hypocrisy. And for me as a citizen, I've been taking that for granted. I, I look out and I see spruces and uh, what was the other one? <laughs> pine trees. Pine, I pine see them trees, everywhere. Yeah. And I think that is just, that's just normal. But how much of the, how would the Swedish forest look like otherwise? And how much of that is still remaining? Uh, well, the, the answer to the last question is the easiest because very little, um, you know, only a few percent of Sweden's forests are actually protected, really protected. A lot of the language used by the, by the industry, but also by the state, it can be very misleading. So you have things like eco parks that, you know, that sounds very, very environmentally friendly. Yeah. But you can clear cut. Um, I mean, I, I was uh, in one of the eco parks run by Svea Skog, you know, which is this, the state owned Swedish forestry company. They own 14% of the forest in Sweden. Uh, and they, they clear cut 40% of the eco park because that's what the rules allow them to do. Because, you know, they help define what these terms should mean. Same with what a clear cut or a clear fell is or what a plantation is. And so, it's, I mean, we would have mostly pine and spruce in our forest, but the, one of the main differences is that you would find them being of very different ages, right? So what happens if you clear cut an area, you cut down virtually all the trees. These days, they tend to leave a few trees so that they can say that they haven't clear cut. You know, so they'll leave a couple of trees per hectare and say, oh yeah, well, see, this isn't actually a clear cut. And, and they, they will leave these little ribbons on those trees that say, nature conservation and consideration <laughs> you know so this is the replacement uh, for the biodiversity in the area and and then they plant right and i mean these days a lot of the time what they'll do is they'll plow the land first although they use a different word because you know plowing sounds bad 
and then and then they use seedlings or seeds so you get these rows mostly sometimes not straight rows of trees that are that have the same source the same genetic source and they're the same age so if you're in a forest and you see that or a forest if you're amongst the trees and you see that oh look all the stems are pretty much the same size the same thickness all the trees yeah, look like that. they're fairly young that's not what we want and another thing is that when you do that you also remove a lot of the dead wood right so if you if you take a pine for example if you if you leave the forest relatively alone uh, you know a pine can easily live for 500 years but it will also do a lot of good for the next 500 years as a dead tree it will play host to a lot of organisms and a lot of um, lichen and mushrooms and other species of fungi they need old trees to survive. And this is also why we have, you know, this conflict has um, involved the Sami quite a bit in the north of the country, our indigenous people who um, have reindeer because the reindeer need lichen that grows on old trees. And so mm -hmm. if you cut down the old forests, it doesn't matter if you replace it with new young trees, the lichen can survive. So there's, there's a lot of issues around this uh, and this, the, the the industry in Sweden is so focused on producing volume. You know, you want to cut down a certain amount of wood every year to provide to the paper industry. And, and that's really what it comes down to. It comes down to not, it, it's not even as simple as saying that you prioritize economy over ecology, because most people would probably be much better off if you didn't manage the forest this way. You can still use the forest you can still you know we're not suggesting that we should stop cutting down trees in sweden most countries in europe for example who do have a forestry industry they do it in a much more sustainable way but but our industry has somehow managed to convince both the country i mean i was exactly like you until a year and a half ago i was so proud of sweden and of how our how well managed our forests are, and we have so much forest because they keep telling us we've never had more trees than we do now. And no, it's true, we have more trees now, but you know the average age of our forests has gone down so much, and you can't just replace an ecosystem that's been around for several thousand years by planting new trees after you've destroyed everything. Mm -hmm. So. What would you like to see Sweden do differently then that maybe other countries are doing? Well, first of all, no more clear cutting. It's, it's mm. simply not the way to, to use the forest. Uh, we also need to protect whatever old growth forest we have left. And, and I mean, old growth, you know, we don't have to get into exactly how you want to define that. But if, if we want to talk about forests that are largely undisturbed and where the average age of the tree is above, let's say, 120 years old, which is not that old, but because we've cut down, you know, 80, 90% of our forests over the last 100 years, there isn't actually that much left above that age, other than in the mountains where it's not profitable to, to cut down the trees anyway. It would cost too much and the trees are old, but they're small. So there's not that much wood in them. So we need to protect much, much more forest than we are doing today. And then we need to rethink how we can have a sustainable, a truly sustainable forestry industry, not, not just one that we call sustainable because wood regenerates, which is basically the, the reasoning here. But you know, if we're gonna take out trees from the forest then we need to leave most of the forest intact, you choose which trees you're gonna take out. You don't just go in with bulldozers and, and clear the entire area and, and destroy the habitat for good. Mm -hmm. So what would it mean for the forest industry then if, because then I guess they couldn't use quite the same tools, would it be like a huge economic sacrifice for them? Or is it a quite small difference that could still make this uh, old growth forest be there? Um, first of all, you know, we need to, to um, separate the large forestry companies from a forest owner. Because at the moment, what's happened is because the big companies, most of them are involved uh, in the paper industry. So that's where they make most of their money. It's not actually the taking out of wood from the forest. So they want to be able to buy the raw material as cheaply as possible. So the price of timber uh, in Sweden 
is extremely low. So it is very difficult to, to make uh, a good income if you own forest today. But the problem is that the, the big companies have managed to convince a lot of the private forest owners that this is the only way that they're going to make money, right? That the, their best option is to let these guys come in and clear the forest and buy the wood. You know, they can do this now and then they can do it again maybe 80 years later because it takes time for the, for the, for the trees to grow to a decent size which is also why they're cutting down the natural forest because it's the only forest that's old enough to take at the moment. But this isn't actually true. I mean, yes, if we wanted to, to have goals that are essentially set as volume, then this is probably one of the few ways to do it. It's just not sustainable. But if we are content with producing less wood, taking out less wood from the forest, but at a higher price, then that changes things quite a lot. And for the individual forest owners, um, and there is a movement of what in Sweden you would call hyggesvitt, so clear cut free uh, ways of managing the forest. And a lot of them are starting to speak up and say, hey, you know what, we have statistics, we're making more money this way because we charge much more for the wood than we were doing or than you are doing uh, with your methods. But it's, it's not been encouraged by the industry because the big money is in producing paper, for example, from the wood, not mm -hmm. from selling the wood. So one of the things we are trying to do, not, and that's not just us, but, but a lot of those of us who want to protect the forest uh, and, and preserve the forest is to engage with individual owners of forests who aren't using the forest in, in such an unsustainable way. And we'll see if we can help uh, elevate their voices as well because they're, they're very important mm. it's interesting to understand uh, the differences and the economics behind uh, this entire situation and uh, it's a it's an interesting industry as well to be able to grow something that you can harvest once in a lifetime it's got to be a lot of complexities there but Absolutely. let's but let's talk about um so what are you guys going through right now as not an organization, but as an initiative? So what is happening right now? What are you currently trying to do and bring awareness to? Well, so our goal from the beginning has basically been to provide visual material, visual ammunition, if you will, for those who are trying to raise awareness. Because the, the industry is so powerful in Sweden and they have a lot of close ties to the state uh, as well, they've dominated the conversation, the official conversation and the official communication about the state of our forest, which is why you and I and a lot of other people have simply accepted that, of course, our forests are very well managed because, I mean, we see the evidence of it all the time. This you know, is there Sweden, are big... right? Yeah, this is Sweden. Exactly. We have more trees than we've ever had before. And so what we've been trying to do is to um, provide a platform both where we can uh, where, where we can put our images, but also encourage other people to share images of what it actually looks like in reality. The, you know, there have been this, these um, crazy statements made. Uh, for example, a few years ago when uh, one of the former uh, bosses at Svea School became the head of the Swedish Forestry uh, Association or agency. agency. Um, and he said that, oh, we don't really have clear cuts anymore in Sweden. We haven't for decades. And then you look at these pictures of just mm. enormous forest clear cut with, you know, a few trees here and there. Yeah. <laughs> but again, it's because they decide, you know, how should a clear cut be defined? How should a plantation be defined? And of course, they define them in ways that it doesn't apply to most of what they do. And from our perspective, it's been, look, it, it shouldn't really be up to you to tell us what what a clear cut is we'll provide the photographs and then you can make up your own mind if sure if you want to call this a forest by all means call it a forest but but at least be honest with what we're talking about um, and so we started out we've been talking for a few months uh, that we were going to do something um, then we ended up starting an instagram account and a website i, I think we, you know within a couple of days uh, because a number of the Sami districts in the north, they, they signed a letter together, which is a very rare thing to happen uh, in Sweden. And when public, 
um, to protest against the treatment of, of them and of the forests that they depend on in the north by Sveaskog. And we, we simply decided that, okay, the momentum is here. Let's do something. Let's see if we can help. And it, it took off. Um, and and it's, it's, in Sweden, it's been fantastic because the, our biggest newspaper has taken a real interest to this. Uh, and so they've, I think, already published 10 or 12 pieces and some of them wow. very long investigative pieces on the forestry industry and some of the shenanigans that they've been getting up to. So it's it's all of a sudden it's wow, in the public well eye done. for real now. Well, it's not just us. We, you know, we've certainly helped, but, but we definitely can't take credit for, for everything. There's a lot of people who've been fighting for this for years. Um, and, but, the, but the, of course, the, the pictures help. You know, it's easier yeah. for people to look at it than to just have word against word coming yeah, from different and directions. Statistics and... So what, would you, what do you hope to accomplish in the next five, ten years then? Uh, honestly, I don't think we have five to ten years. You know, we're we're logging just under one percent of our forests in Sweden every year, and and that may not sound like a lot, but when you consider, first of all, that that's more than Brazil does, and secondly, uh -huh. that because we've been doing this for so long, uh, you know, the pool of old growth or or any kind of natural or older forest left is very, very small. So we're not taking 1% of those forests, we're taking several percent of those forests because most of the plantations are too young to be cut. Uh, so within a few years, you know, we would more or less have, have logged the last of the unprotected old growth forests in Sweden. And so we need to move much, much faster than that. Um, one of the things that that's important now is because Sveaskog, again, the biggest company, forestry company in Sweden is state owned. They basically follow the directives that they receive from the state. Mm. And so that's where a lot of the efforts are at the moment to give them new directives to protect forests instead of to, to log the forests. Mm. So hopefully that's something that, that can happen. But, you know, broader than that, we just want more people to know what's going on you know fine like if if this is a democratic decision that we're going to cut our forests you know if, if that's what swedes really want that's what swedes really want but but when you look at surveys you get like 80 percent, 90 percent of swedes saying they don't like clear cuts but at the same time most of them don't think that we have that many because they don't see them yeah and so we at least just want to make sure it's out there it's in the open they can't get away with saying that we don't have clear cuts or that this is sustainable or as they're con continuously arguing now that this is actually good for fighting climate change uh, which is not something that's accepted you know by the by the eu generally or by environmental organizations but it's been it's been the line that the swedish government has been pushing for a long time that we need to log our forests because old forests are wasteful Mm. So, you know, we need to teach nature how to how to take care of the climate. <laughs> so you're spreading awareness then. And imagine someone listening to this podcast feels inspired to take some kind of uh, positive action. What would be some important steps they can take after listening to this? A lot of it depends on where they are, of course. Um, I mean, this is not a problem that is that only exists in Sweden. Sweden and Finland happen to be particularly bad, especially within Europe. If you're in Sweden and listening to this, then you know you, even though it sounds like you always say the same thing, writing to your politicians, it, it does matter. You know, we the reason they've been getting away with this for so long is because not enough people have known or cared about it or taken action. So even just dropping an email to your representative saying, "Look, I don't want clear cuts in this area," uh, it helps. You can join. You, you can't really. You know, we're not an organization. You can join. You can follow us but you know, you know to keep up with things but there are organizations that you can join of course in sweden there is protect the forest good as um or the nature protection um organization but but there's all kinds in other places as well um and you can be more aware of, of your role as a consumer you know if you are buying a product that's made from wood at the moment don't buy it if it's if it's made in sweden uh, you know, unless you can be sure that it's, it comes from a small, truly sustainable uh, forest plantation or sorry, um, forest company, but, but most of it doesn't. 
And it is as consumers that we at least have some say. There have been changes made in the past when, um, when, when foreign companies decided to not buy wood from Sweden or wood products from Sweden. And that's one of the few things that we can, you know, that scares these guys. They, they don't mm -hmm. particularly care what Stefan and I or, or what you uh, will think. But if, if the consumer base starts saying, hang on a second, I don't want to contribute to this any more than I want to contribute to the deforestation of the Amazon, you know, or I don't want to buy palm oil products that contributes to the cutting down of the rainforest in Borneo. But I, I personally don't want to use toilet paper that comes from uh, an old growth boreal forest in northern Sweden either. That makes a lot of sense. We're coming to, up towards the end of this interview and I want to say thank you Marcus for taking the time to teach me and our listeners about a problem that I was totally unaware of. Oh my pleasure I'm learning all the time as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. And uh, for you listening, if you enjoyed this interview, press subscribe on YouTube or in your podcast app, because that is showing the algorithms that this is important. So more people can get awareness of what is happening to the old growth forest in Sweden. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode. What is great.com? That is the most common question that we get. And the shortest answer I can give you is that we are a company that is moving money from the online casino industry and donates it to charities that is helping the environment. The long answer, unfortunately, I don't have time to tell you today. But if you're curious, definitely Google whatisgreat.com to learn more.